And then I think we we are rocking and rolling. So I just want to really take a moment and say thank you for, for being here. We are so excited and honored for you to share some time with us this afternoon and share really just kind of what led you to where you are today, your, your career path, and then of course hear about 2B Mindset. I also have just a little introduction here and then I'm going to turn it over to you. Alana Molstein, she's on our call with us today. She's a registered dietitian nutritionist, which is the highest standard in the field of nutrition. She's earned a Bachelor of Science degree in the nutrition and dietetics from the University of Maryland, sits on the prestigious executive leadership team for the American Heart Association, and leads the Bruin Health Improvement Program of UCLA. So many amazing accomplishments and accolades. So. Uh, we really are excited to hear to hear kind of like I said your story and and then hear about the program. So I am going to turn it over to you. Let me unmute you. Okay, there you go. Um, thank you everyone for being on and sharing your cameras with me. I love when like everyone's video is on. Um, it's so much better for everyone who wants to hop on. I'd love to see your face. Um, so yes, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, good to see you. Um, I'm Alana, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, as you heard, um, but I'm also someone who's lost 100 pounds um, and struggled with my weight and eating for, you know, my whole childhood. So, you know, kind of go into that for a minute, just if you haven't heard my story or know where I'm coming from. Um, so basically, I always grew up in a food-focused family food obsessed, foody culture before the word got trendy. Um, we just love food, everything about it. Everything was about food. Carnivals were about funnel cakes and cotton candy and birthday parties were about ice cream cake and pizza and movie theaters were about popcorn and soda and candy and everything in between. Before we'd go on a trip, we would map out our meals and, and of course, and that was just our whole mentality and mindset. And at the same time, we were all very overweight and also always complaining that it was our genes and metabolism and big bones. So uh, that's kind of <laughs> the camp I'm coming from. And um, love food, always loved lots of it, always a volume eater, always loved every kind of cuisine and, and did, never discriminated too much. Um, just would eat mindlessly in front of the television at night, popcorn, jars of peanut butter, loads of Chinese takeout, whatever it was, I got my hands on it. Um, you know, when we'd go to the mall with friends, like they would be shopping for clothes. I couldn't fit into them. So I would hang out with my Wetzel pretzel, my Frappuccino and, and watch them. So I was just kind of like letting my whole childhood slip away. Just, just being over consumed with food in so many areas. Um, and I just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when my parents got divorced, I think I also started using food more as an emotional coping coping mechanism as well. Um, and would just, you know, kind of eat as a form of comfort and stability as we moved around a lot. And there were a lot of marriages and divorces and, and step siblings and ex step siblings and, and just chaotic times. So food just became my mainstay, my comfort, my everything. And I kept getting bigger and bigger. I kept, you know, growing out of kids clothing stores into adult clothing stores into plus size clothing stores and beyond. Um, and my doctor started getting really concerned because my health was taking a toll as well. My cholesterol, my blood sugars, my triglycerides, my blood pressure was all increasing as a little kid. Uh, and my pediatrician was already showing that I was like completely off the charts and that my lab values were looking more what she would expect to see in a 40 year old man, not an eight year old girl. So, um, as a little kid, she and my parents sent me to weight loss camp. So I went to fat camp, um, as an eight year old for nine weeks and by myself and I had to get weighed and measured and take before and after pictures and get this pre-portioned plate of food. Um, and work out 10 hours a day uh, while my friends were, you know, having a more freeing summer. This is what I was doing, um, telling them that I was at sports camp for the summer because I was too embarrassed to tell them I was at weight loss camp. Um, but I ended up loving it because I lost like 30 pounds and came back to school feeling lighter and better. But of course, I just went back to all my old ways. And my parents weren't good food influencers at all. Uh, they did every diet. They were cereal dieters. My parents did Atkins, Zone, Pritikin, meal delivery, 
Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, Fast, Cleanses, you name it, they did it. Um, and the equivalent now of Whole30 and Vegan and Paleo and Keto. And I just watched them do everything all the time. I'd watch them do it and go off it and do it and go off it. Lose weight, gain back more. Lose weight, gain back more. Binge and cheat and all that negativity. And I knew that wasn't a better way. So I refused, thankfully, to ever go into that boat. But I had my own thing where I would just go to camp every summer, lose 30 pounds, and then gain it all back in more of a school year. So that was my routine. I'd go to camp, I'd lose 30 pounds, I'd gain like 45 to 50 in a school year. Um, and so over time, I kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and my weight was far exceeding my growth. And um, I ended up at my highest weight, I was a size 20, and I was 215 pounds, and I was only five feet two inches tall. Um, people are always shocked when they see my before pictures that I really was massively obese and don't believe it's me. It's me. Um, I was like custom ordering size 20 online. I was barely fitting into it. And there was no number beyond that as far as like gap.com and oldnavy.com went. I couldn't shop in stores, but luckily there was like some online shopping that I could get into, um, but nothing nice. So if we had a nice occasion, I would have to go to a tailor and a fabric store and try to piece something together because I didn't want to go to Lane Bryant as a kid. Um, and anyway, so I had to find a better way. I was literally letting my life just pass before me. I wasn't, I, I was always sociable. That was the thing. I was always confident. I was always sociable. I had friends, but my exterior didn't match my interior. Inside, I was vibrant. Inside, I felt cool. And then I, you know, at the but then at the end of the day, I was hiding, positioning my friends in front of me in pictures and avoiding doing activities because I was so self-conscious that everyone would think about my weight if I were tried out for basketball because they would just be, must only be thinking about my roles bouncing and not, you know, everything else going on. I was just so fixated on this. Um, and I just dreamed of having a better body, dreamed of having an easier life. And I decided stop dreaming and just start doing and get it together. So, um, and figure out a better system. So going into high school, I said enough is enough. I cannot continue this downward struggle spiral, um, thing that's just taking over. So I decided to go to camp that summer, lose 30 pounds. I went from like 215 to 185, but I went into high school with the mindset of like, I'm not gaining this weight back. Like I'm, that's, it's enough. I'm not like waiting 10 months to hop on the scale to see 50 pounds up without my control. I can't do this anymore. So I decided, okay, let me at least go on the scale every once in a while to make sure that it's not going up. Like, so I'm at least not going up, that I'm at least just like maintaining this weight. Um, and in the process, I actually started learning how to lose weight uh, while still eating a lot of food, while still living my life, but with this just different approach. And I started, you know, going to friends' houses who did have a healthier weight and the whole family had a healthier weight and approach to eating. And I started learning and, and I was always believed that we had slower metabolisms. And then I'd realize, well, you know what, their dining room table looks a lot different than ours and their pantry looks a lot different than ours. And, um, their parents are speaking a lot differently than mine are. And when they're talking about going to a wedding, they're not only talking about the caterer and the smorgasbord and, you know, the quality of the meat. They're talking about the flowers. They're talking about the bride. They're talking about what they're going to wear. They're like, they're just, their focus is in a different place. And I started realizing like, how, how can I just pick up on whatever tools I can find and create a better system so I could keep eating a lot of food, enjoying my life, never going on a silly diet while still losing my weight. And I started getting really successful at it on my own for the first time. And I decided my life was just so much better. And so I wanted everyone else to get those benefits. So I wanted to become a registered dietitian so I could learn more about the credible research and understanding of nutrition. So if I were going to be teaching it to others, it would be in the safest way and for myself and other people. So I did go on to get my bachelor's of science degree in nutrition, become a registered dietitian, later went on to get my master's degree in nutrition. And at that point I was down about 75 pounds. And in the process, I was still in a sorority and I still drank and I still late night ate with my friends, you know, through college and, and got married and had that whole experience, but while still living my life and keeping my weight off at, with my system. And at that point, UCLA hired me to teach a weight loss seminar. So UCLA gave me a hundred UCLA employees to start applying my system onto them. And, um, 
I had everyone. So it was my first time applying what I've learned in school and personal experience onto other people. And I got the widest demographic you can imagine because I had, you know, people who are 19 years old with, you know, who had jobs where they had to be on their feet all day, like cooks in the kitchen and janitors. And then I had 75 year old postmenopausal women who were administrative assistants or secretaries um, sitting down all day. I had nurses working overnight hours. I had everything in between. I had nursing women. I had people who did like to work out. I had people who didn't like to work out. Um, I had people who were on medications causing weight gain. I had people with low thyroids and everything in between. Um, I had Greeks and Muslim and Italian and Jews and, and, and people celebrating every holiday you could imagine. And I had to really start giving a general approach of how people were going to lose weight. And luckily it started working um, and it was really effective. And even that first semester, the average weight loss was about 12 pounds weight loss in 12 weeks, but I wanted to keep improving it. And in addition to working in a general class, I got to work with each person one-on-one. -on -one. And one-on-one, -on -one, I started really hearing people's internal struggles. And that's when people would confide in me and confess, like, Alana, I know you say I should eat that for dinner, but you don't know how tempting I find fajitas. Or you don't know that I'm such a fry person. Or you don't realize is that when my mother-in-law says that jab to me, it just makes me want to eat cookies. And you don't know that, you know, as much as you say I have a good metabolism, my body should lose weight, I feel like I'm at this plateau and I'm stuck. Or, and all these internal struggles would start to come out. And I would start to realize, you know, you're not the only one who feels that way. I feel that way too sometimes, and so does he, and so does she, and we all self-sabotage in that way, and we all have those cravings, and we all have those setbacks, and there's just nothing approaching this. And that's when I realized that, yes, weight loss is nutritional, as every diet will tell you, just eat this and eat this, or just eat this then, and then, yes, there's a nutritional component, but it's just as much, if not more, also behavioral, emotional, environmental, and there's so much that nothing and no one is talking about. There really is the part that makes people lose this weight in a more sustainable, well fashion. And so I started creating systems. And so I ended up teaching at UCLA for 10 semesters, every semester with a new group of 100 people, and kept perfecting the approach and the system and the process, and kept moving around the order in which I taught things and the way I said things and, and everything. Because as people would talk about, well, Alana, I'm not an emotional eater, but what do I do at like a football game, like a Super Bowl or Thanksgiving when I'm just around food for so long? Then what do I do? So I created a process to approach that. And I created a system for approaching that self sabotage thinking and like, little new sayings to override the negative sayings that go on in our head. And it kept getting better and better. And in addition, I was also building up my private practice at UCL, um, in Beverly Hills, still also working group settings and one-on-one. -on -one. And then I had my daughter and then I actually got back into weight loss mode really after having perfected the system. That's when I lost my last 25 pounds. And um, it was after that, that I met Beachbody and that was about two years ago. And at that point I'd met with thousands of clients and had lost my hundred pounds and really felt like I have a perfect system. And I met Beachbody about two years ago and that's when they were excited about it, but wanted to take it to the next level. So for the past two years now, we've actually been optimizing it and enhancing it and testing it out now on hundreds of people. And it's gotten better and better and better. And the weight loss averages have gotten higher and higher and higher um, and more sustainable and more effective than ever. And now we're at the point where we get to share it with all of you in a week. That is so, wow, I, I heard your story a few times and I, I get emotional every time, but we're, we're so blessed that you're part of the Beachbody community and family. And so can you tell me what is To Be Mindset? So um, it's a video-based program. So on May 2nd, when you get it, it's going to be a series of videos. So it's about 40 videos in total, but the first 26 really break down the program. So 26 videos is going to be the equivalent of having like 10 to 15 private sessions with me. And it starts with the structure. I know a lot of people are like, there's no structure. It's just a mindset. I need structure. You will have structure. Believe me, people are not losing 60, 70, 80, 95 plus pounds of this program without structure. There is enough structure that you're going to learn in the first few videos to make sure that you're in control and seeing success. But then in the following videos, you'll start learning like, 
the flexibility of this program and how you're going to tailor it to your needs so you can be happy while doing it. Um, so the first few videos are like my basic principles. I call them my two bunnies, which you'll hear, which is why to be mindset. A lot of it is because of that. Um, but then you'll learn how I talk about breaking down the food groups. So even if you're gluten free or dairy free or vegan or vegetarian, you'll see that it's so simple in a way that you would modify it based on your favorite best foods. Um, and then you'll hear, I'll go through like what to have at breakfast, what we want at lunch, what we want at snack, what we want at dinner. So you understand that you're not going to be following a rigid meal plan. I'm not going to tell you you need to eat chicken and Brussels sprouts. You're going to see, oh, wow, I could actually go to sushi. Oh, wow, I could do this at Thai. I could make this flexible for me in my lifestyle wherever I am. And then you'll hear, see more of like how you're going to get into it. So the videos are all like five to 30 minutes, but the longest one is the grocery store because I literally take you aisle by aisle showing you how to save money, how to just like tips for just making your grocery trip seamless, overcoming those temptations and two for one sales so you can like stay focused um, on what you really need, how to read a food label in like two seconds so you're not overwhelmed by its complications. You're just like, eh, don't want it. Yeah, want it. Like, um, and everything in between. Um, there's a video, how to set up your kitchen for success. There's a video, what if I don't cook? And it's me showing you with a stack of takeout menus, how you can order from Mexican, Chinese, Thai, wherever you are, um, and still lose weight with the 2B mindset. It shows you how to travel, how to go to dinner parties, how to what to do if you just want to eat more, what if you're an emotional eater. So there's really a video addressing all of that. And then there's also a lot of like mindset specific videos of like, but Alana, the scale went up, now what? But Alana, I feel like I hit a plateau, now what do I do? But Alana, I feel like I completely fell off. Now what do I do? So there's literally a video addressing all of those things. Um, and there's also additional recipe videos. And the recipe videos are super fun, super approachable. Even if you've never cooked before, you're going to want to. The recipes have like five ingredients or less, most of them. They're big, they're satisfying, they're delicious. They're not complicated. They're not pre-measured or perfected. It's like me making a mess in the kitchen and showing you how it could just taste so good. Um, and then it's also going to come with materials. So in addition to all the videos, right away you should be able to download the PDF versions, but you're also going to get a box of the set booklets. So there's a getting started guide, a go-to guide. The go-to guide is like a nice sum up of all the videos. So you'd watch the videos and then you would have like the go-to guide just summarizing the food list, the meal ideas and everything. Um, and then also there's a recipe book and an awesome water bottle imprinted with all my little sayings on it that you're gonna love. So um, that's really kind of what you're getting when you start. Wow. That's, I, you know, I think I've been a coach for seven years and gone through so many programs and just hearing all of the pieces that, that encompass to be mindset, you just, I think like I, there's so much that I can learn from this and imply, you know, implement into my own life, you know, with a mom with two kids and busy in business. But when you think about to be mindset, who is this program for? Well, every coach keeps saying to other, every coach has been in the test group keeps telling all the other coaches, like, this program is for you. <laughs> like, like, and they're all like, this program is for you. Like, stop thinking about your customers. Like, you can benefit from this program. I think that's like one thing all the coaches have to realize because I know coach mentality. You want to already start thinking about your customer base. But I promise you, the more you do this program, the wider your customer base will be. Um, all the coaches who've done this program have said that their coaching abilities have increased significantly. Um, and it's also one of those programs that like everyone can benefit so much from. So I just really recommend you do this for you. This is a program I see like the sales growing month to month. Like it's like, I know everyone wants like the big May push or the June push, but this is something like if you lose weight on this program or you just improve your relationship with food on this program and you continue to keep it off the way our test groups have like literally lost weight a year ago and have kept it off with that positive mindset, that glow of inner confidence, not restriction, you know, people will be wanting to learn about it and getting it from you or next January, next March, next April, next forever. So I really recommend like first and foremost, you do the program, you do it well, you understand it, you learn it, you know, you're very familiar with the videos, so like you know how to address people and direct them when they're going through different things. Um, 
So I really recommend every, like all the coaches do it in, for themselves first and get the benefits from it. It's definitely for anyone you know who needs to lose five to 200 plus pounds. Um, and it's also for anyone who just has to greatly improve their relationship with food in their body, has a negative thinking and perspective of, yeah, they might look great on the outside, but every time they have a slice of pizza, they beat themselves up. They think they have to work out 12 times later and they just need a more livable, refreshing, approachable way of looking at food. Um, and it's also really great for people who don't want to work out. So there are tons of people who don't want to work out. There are tons of people out there that you've probably wanted to sign up for a workout program and they are just not interested. One, because as someone who is very overweight, it's not necessarily the most fun thing to exercise when you don't feel very comfortable in your body. Um, but also they might feel like they don't have time to exercise. They just don't want to, or, or it's for the person who is really athletic, who does love the beach body programs or other type of physical active programs, but aren't seeing the results they want because their eating isn't a good place. So it really benefits like all of those people. It's really great for anyone who's been told or has believed that they can't lose weight. So people with PCOS, women post-menopause, men with low testosterone, people who are on medications, everyone who believes they can't lose weight because they've done one or two diets and have gained it back, like you will see your body loves losing weight and you'll be really successful in this program. So you mentioned it and, and talking about the, the fitness piece of things. So I know you mentioned, you know, you don't have to be following a, a workout regimen with this to be mindset. What about someone who wants to, what, what piece of that is integrated into exactly. the program? So if someone has not been doing anything, I recommend just focus on this. And honestly, like the people who don't want to work out with this program in the beginning ends up being the biggest fitness enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. So the people who are going to do this program are not going to want to work out. Just let them do the program, coach them through it, have them get down those layers. And I'm telling you in a couple of months, they're going to be banging down your door. Like I feel so look how good I look, look how amazing I feel. Now I want to put my body to the test. Like what workout program should I do? So those people literally end up becoming like the biggest fitness enthusiasts. Like that we've had so many people in that first test group who weren't coaches. They were just everyday Americans, like who had done Weight Watchers in the past. Jenny Craig just struggled with their weight. They lost a ton of weight, didn't even know what Beachbody was before starting. And they just like finished 80 day obsession workouts with the 2B Mindset Eating Plan. And they look like ridiculous. Okay. Um, so definitely for those who don't like to work out, I wouldn't push it at the start. Maybe I would encourage walking yoga retreat, something like that. As people want to start working out, I would recommend the lower impact stuff. Um, if someone is already doing like really intense workout programs, um, like 80 day obsession or shift shop or something like that, we've had coaches continue to do that with the to be mindset meal plan, um, and eating, um, way, but I just really recommend you go into it with a sense of flexibility. I'm a big workouter. I love to work out. It's something I have always done consistently, but I've always realized that food is everything and exercise is extra credit. So you're going to hear me say that. And I say that not because it's not a good idea to work out, but because, you know, the American Heart Association recommendations for a healthy heart and body are three times a week um, working out. So like there are blood pressure lowering benefits, cardiovascular benefits from exercising. Also, if it's just three days a week, 30 minutes, it doesn't necessarily have to be six days a week for an hour and you beat yourself up if you don't get there. So I just recommend like, uh, if you are someone who likes to work out, continue, absolutely continue, but you may want to approach with a little more flexibility because if right now you're all or nothing six days a week or whatever it is, there might be one day where you realize like you need to catch up on sleep. And when you sleep more, you actually eat better. And when you eat better, you feel better. Um, and I just encourage you to have that flexibility with it. Or you might think, you know, on Thursday, you're really short on time because you have a meeting or your kid is sick or something. You only have 30 minutes. You could either go to the grocery store and get food to help make sure that you're like eating really well and consistent for the next couple of days. Or you do that 30 minute workout, you might find going to the grocery store will do better for your weak progress, your mindset and your overall health than would per se that workout. So I love to work out. 
Um, I am a big fan. I don't want to get a reputation for not being a workout fan because I do work out so regularly. But if you just have to approach it as like, it's extra credit, it's positive, it's there to enhance your life and well-being and not be looked at as this like form of discipline and punishment that then people over reward themselves with food and like work out just so they could deserve a cupcake. Like if you have that mindset mentality, yeah. walk away from exercise for a couple of weeks while you get this together. And then slowly I would bring back the workouts. We have some questions coming through, but I also want to ask you, I, I, from my understanding, we weigh every day in this program. Can you talk about, and I know it's going to probably be addressed in the program, but for someone who has a negative relationship maybe with the scale can we talk about how we work through that this is my favorite topic thank you for bringing it up i could talk about this forever um i know there are other questions but i, I haven't found a way to talk about this in 60 seconds or less so i'm going to try to keep it brief but um I'm, I, i'll try to not take everyone's day the scale is your friend the scale is your friend as you like even heard from my story which i'm happy like this comes up right after giving my story as you see like every summer I'd lose 30 pounds in camp and then I would come back and my eating would be completely out of control and I'd wait 10 months before realizing that I gained 50 pounds um how horrible is that I kept having to start over further over and further um whereas if i you know just continued like in camp we would go on the scale once a week had i just continued in the school year going on once a week i would have seen it go from 150 to 155 to 165 to 175 to 180 before i'd be like oh shoot i shouldn't wait till june i should probably do something starting march before i got there and not let it go out of control um so the one thing is is that the scale has been drastically proven through immense amount of research um, as something that really helps prevent weight gain. So in one perspective, it is great for preventing weight gain. Um, people are definitely look at the scale as an emotional thing, as something that, you know, is a definition of your self-worth. Absolutely not um, in any perspective. And I don't want anyone to ever look at it that way. And you will never look at it that way with your mindset, but you will start looking at it as a tool. It's going to be the tool to show you what works and what doesn't. A lot of people love going on the scale when they're doing a program and then they avoid it forever, like the plague when they're not. Um, and they actually do love it when they're doing something super restrictive. It's the only thing that keeps them doing anything silly and restrictive because you're seeing that progress and success, but then you think it's all or nothing, then you avoid it. And if anyone on earth, because this is the first thing I ask people when I meet them one-on-one -on -one in a private session, when I ask people like, oh, go through your weight gain of your whole life, and they go, oh, and then I got married and I gained a ton of weight, or after I had my kid, I gained a ton of weight, or all this stuff, it's like, well, were you going on the scale pretty often when you were, go when you were gaining weight? Of course not. What about that one program you were doing when you were losing a weight? Oh yeah, that's when I was going on it, right? So we always do that and it's very all or nothing and that's why everyone's yo-yoing so much. One, because the programs are unsustainable and they're horrible and they're telling, I mean, like, you know, there's so many like grapefruit things, crazy things out there um, that people are doing that are unsustainable and unrealistic, but also we lose sight um, during the time. We never look at it as a tool for helping us realize what does work for our body and what doesn't while living our life. Um, I do find like a fear of the scale is usually comes down to a big fear of food. A lot of people are scared of the scale because they're eating carbs or because they like fries or because they like to eat cake and french fries and pizza and alcohol. And they're scared of the scale because they think every time they have a slice of pizza and a glass of wine, it must mean that they go up 10 pounds. And the truth is that's not really the case. Um, and the two be minds that you actually see that you could have a slice of pizza and a glass of wine and the scale could stay the same as long as you approach it in the way that I'm showing you. And then you actually start to love food again, appreciate food again, not beat yourself up when you actually treat yourself, not look at it as all or nothing, not look at it as a binge, not torture yourself because you actually see, oh wow, it's actually not poison. It's actually not crazy. And I actually can control myself. Um, so it also really helps to relieve your fear of food and become more trusting with food. Also prevents weight gain. And then in addition, it also works as an amazing accountability tool to just want to keep eating well and seeing that progress and learning from it. Um, the research backing the scale is tremendous. Uh, there is no long-term weight loss benefits of keto, of paleo, of vegan, but there are tremendous, tremendous 
long-term benefits of going on the scale. There is something called the National Weight Control Registry, and it's a group of 10,000 Americans who've lost weight and kept it off. So this is a really important study. It's the longest, most credible study in the United States. It's at Duke University, and it's 10,000 Americans. And all Americans, we're living in a very obesity-latent society designed to make us obese, the fast food and commercials and all this stuff. And within this country, there are 10,000 Americans who've lost an average of 66 pounds and kept it off for over five years. And I'm actually in this study as someone who's lost 100 pounds and kept it off for years. I'm in this study. And they give us these surveys twice a year to write how much dairy do we eat a week and how much this a week and what do we do? And I, it's very, very detailed. And we all take it very, very seriously. And data gets reported of it. Out of these 10,000 Americans who've lost over 50 pounds and kept it off, 78% weigh themselves at least once a week. Of course. How else would they know if they're keeping their weight off if they weren't looking at their weight? So right now we live in a society where we're tracking everything. We all know as coaches, it helps to track your sales. We all know as parents, like your kids would not be studying for their exams if they weren't being graded. Like we all know that like you don't walk as many steps if you're not wearing a step tracker or you wouldn't be working out as much if you weren't accountable to some sort of group. Then at the same time, we keep talking about the obesity epidemic and the overweight epidemic and the fact that over two thirds of Americans are either overweight or obese. And yet obesity is a measure of your weight. Weight is measured on the scale and we're telling everyone to avoid the scale. So think about like, if you just avoided looking at your bank account forever, would you just like want to wake up one day and expect it to be like with a million extra dollars? Like, no, you would have to track like, what is it? What effort am I putting into my business that's succeeding? And what is a waste of my time? And, and how am I learning from it? So the scale is just an amazing tool to show you what works, what doesn't. It's an incredible tool for, and it's one of a zillion tools I'm going to teach you. Um, and also like a lot of people have a negative relationship with the scale in the past because they didn't know how to use it because they went on sort of fast or they thought they had to starve in order to see it go down. Um, and with the 2B mindset, you're going to realize you eat in the way I explained to you, you're going to be full and satisfied every single day. You're going to be able to travel. You're going to be able to go to a restaurant and that thing is still going to go down. So, um, you know, obviously people are not going to like it when they go on it, but it's also very dangerous. The fact that people have become so scared of the scale because people are actually avoiding doctor's appointments because of it. And studies are coming out that people are avoiding physical exams with their doctor because they're so scared of seeing the scale. That is dangerous. And what's happening is that people are avoiding seeing their weight. So they're avoiding doctor's appointments and every two pounds a person gains increases their risk of diabetes by four and a half to 9%. So not being able to look at a two pound gain on a scale and how to learn from it so you can lose it. People are instead waiting until they have to check their blood sugar levels and prick themselves and be at risk of amputations and, and heart disease and all these things that come from just not monitoring your health on a more regular basis. So the scale is short, scary. If you have not been going on it, if you have a past negative relationship with it, I am not going to tell you you're going to love it tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to instantly wake up and be the biggest fan, but I am going to show you that soon it'll be that friend that you never had. It'll be, you know, like everyone tells you if you're getting too small, no one tells you if you're getting um, like, like too big. It's like that thing that's going to catch you when you're emotional eating, when you, you know, are just like eating for stress and you don't realize what it is. And the scale starts going up and you realize, yeah, you know, I got to sort this thing out in my life. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just self-sabotaging. And it's, it's really, there is just one of them tons of tools I'm going to show you, but you're going to start looking at it as a tool and as something really constructive and positive and getting you to where you want to be. Awesome. I love that kind of flip it on its head and change the way we, we think about it, the way we interact with it. Because there's, you know, questions coming through or, you know, comments like I just worry that if it, you know, it doesn't tell me what I want it to tell me, then I get so much anxiety. And so I, I get that that there is total, I mean, like, you're gonna see like, the, the most amazing thing that comes out of this program, the number one thing I love to hear women say specifically is this program gave me control. And we all love and want control over our lives. We want control over our kids. We want control over our spouses. We want control over the political climate. And we fight so hard and have so much anxiety over all these things we can't control. And it makes us feel so stressed and anxious on a day-to-day -day basis. 
And you're going to start to see that the scale is actually something that you can control. And you're going to see that like the way you eat and what you see on the scale next morning becomes super predictable based on how you learn what works best for your body and what doesn't. And that sense of control, oh God, there's like nothing better in the world. I mean, that's why people in this program look so happy. That's why their before and after pictures don't look like someone who did a juice cleanse who's like starving with a tattoo on their head of like, just feed me a burger. When people do the two big mindset, they look fresh. They look healthy. They are empowered. They are stronger than ever. They just want to share this with the world because they feel so in their body, so in control. Um, and so much like they, they got it and it doesn't happen the first month. This program is very different than any other in that it actually gets better and easier with time. And people tend to lose more weight with the 2B mindset in month two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine than they necessarily do in month one because the first month it is figuring it out. It is watching the videos, starting to apply them, understanding the system and working it out. But once you have it, it's like it just melts off of you because you, you, you figure out what works and what doesn't and you just keep with it. That is empowering because I even think, like I said, going, being in this for seven years, I still feel like I'm still learning what works for me and it changes so much and I still feel like there's a lot of unknowns. So, you know, just having another tool is really empowering and it's going to be helpful for so many of us. So I know there's some questions coming through. Jess, there did come, Jess is in the test group and she is pregnant. I know there came through something about, you know, what if I'm pregnant, nursing, can Jess, do you want to unmute yourself? Alana, do you want to touch Well, me? let me just answer because Jess was in a unique experience. So this is a very effective weight loss program. So as it stands, it's not for pregnant women. I'm also like almost nine months pregnant here. So um, as it stands right now, it's not a, it's not for pregnant women because it's an effective weight loss program. However, as I mentioned, even if you don't have weight to lose, there's so much teaching you just a healthier approach to eating and a healthier relationship with food that pregnant women can immensely benefit from. So hopefully we're gonna publish modifications to go along with this of how you would do with the for pregnancy. So you're not, you know, losing weight, but you're getting all those that all those other tools. Um, but right now it's not, we just haven't come up with it yet. But hey Jazz. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been saying too. It's been kind of a funny thing. Like I was in a test group, but you can't do this. Like, but I think explaining that, like the general two bunnies and everything will change your mindset around food. And I do hope that the stuff that we did together gets published. I think it would be huge. Yeah, I'm, I did everything I need to do. I'm waiting for Beachbody and legal and everyone to improve, to approve it. Hopefully it'll be ready by May 2nd. I just, I don't want to make any promises because as it stands right now, I don't want any pregnant woman to do it because yep. it wouldn't be safe. But if they did follow like this, just slight things, they could benefit tremendously. Totally. And by the way, and breastfeeding women. Yeah. <laughs> and breastfeeding women. I mean, this is amazing for breastfeeding women. Um, breastfeeding women who've done this program have the cutest before and afters because they show them getting smaller while their babies are getting bigger. Um, yeah, it's adorable. And like they're getting to their pre-pregnancy weights faster than ever before um, while still maintaining a milk supply and doing well. So that's awesome. And then we get to follow your postpartum journey too. So I, I am like, I'm, I get so excited to re-enter weight loss mode. I'm very, very excited. Congratulations. So everyone, um, it's very exciting because we're launching at the same time that I'll be losing weight. So that's exciting. <laughs> so there's some questions about uh, other people that it's for, tweens and teenagers. I mean, what do you think about kind of? Definitely, definitely for mature teenagers. Like that's my favorite population to work with because obviously that's when I like changed my mindset, felt mature enough to do this. Um, so teenagers who are mature, and motivated can definitely do this program. I love when teenagers do this program because then it's, it's the last weight loss program anyone ever has to do. So I love when teenagers do this because if I can help them at 16 years old with this, they'll never feel like they have to do anything destructive in their future. So, you know, as a parent, as a guardian, you just have to know your teen and know that they're mature and motivated enough to do it. If they're younger than that, I really recommend the parents do this parents focus on doing this and then the kid it has a beautiful cascading benefit that if the parent is doing this 
everyone in the household benefits regardless of the, the strong effort they're putting in because there's so much you can control. A lot, I mean, I just I got a call from a mom who's like, you got to help me with my overweight kid. And I actually knew this mom well. She's like, you got to help me with my overweight kid. And this mom eats terribly and doesn't work all day, doesn't have a job. And her kids are in school till 4.30 and she still orders takeout every night. And I was like, I, your kid is nine they're not mature and i don't think i think it'd be a big waste of time but let me work with you and show you how there's so much you could be doing to set your kid up for success and she goes no 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 it's school lunch i know it's school lunch i'm like of course okay blame it on the one meal of a day that you don't have control over oh that's fine but I, the, for the general speaking i work with a lot of kids i work with a lot of parents it's one of my specialties in my private practice and when they're under 12 years old it's honestly, it comes down to the parents. If the parents do this program and do it well and really take it in and maybe put your kid on your lap for when I'm talking about what you want at lunch or what you want at dinner or the food groups and like kind of like walk them into like hearing some of the principles of it without making sure that they're following it to a T. I mean, you'll just watch them slim down and get healthier and start eating better um, in the process without having to like whip them into a diet type like you're a problem at a young age which is like just always better to avoid that if you can yeah i have to say also your instagram graphics are so powerful i haven't even gone through the program but just being more mindful you know i ate chicken wings the other day <laughs> instead of eating the whole basket i loaded up on the veggies and then i didn't nice so yeah <laughs> so, i mean guys, i think crazy how many messages I get from people that like people lose like 20 pounds just following me from Instagram and like I, I every day I get messages like that people lost like 10 pounds the first two weeks following me on Instagram like I've been getting these messages for years which is so funny to me because I literally have kept I mean like even Beachbody like they couldn't believe it they were like oh my god like you don't share any of this proprietary good stuff on Instagram like there's it's there's so much in the to be mindset like people are gonna be blown away there are people who've been following me for years who think like they know the whole program. And then when they watch the mindset, they're going to realize like they might've had 1% of a window of like how to do this. So um, yes, there's like, that is like nothing compared to what you're going to get with this program. Does anyone want to, to unmute yourselves? I mean, I really have just been kind of, you know, asking the questions that, you know, Alana would love to hear from you guys too. So just unmute yourself. Hey, Alana, I had a quick question. Yeah. I have a potential client who had weight loss surgery about a year ago. She's lost about 100 pounds, but she told me, I had the surgery on my stomach, not my brain. And I'm like, yes. Um, so she thinks that this might be a really great way to overcome that. That's Are there any great way to put it. Yeah, so I've had a lot of clients who've had the weight loss surgery. It's like, everywhere there's a billboard mm -hmm. for it. it's like 1-800 weight loss I mean it's it's like free now like insurance yeah. covers it it's insane right easy it's so sad. the the rates of weight gain are so high and it's such a band-aid it's a good band-aid you know sometimes it buys people like five ten years of life but unfortunately a lot of people most people gain their weight back and find a way to manipulate the system and like I, I've had clients like you can't eat a lot at one time, mm -hmm. so she'll find a way to literally eat every minute of the day slowly, so she can, you know, because it's like a whatever, it's a horrible relationship with food that gets you there in the first place, and and then obviously if you don't repair that, then it comes back on. So um, people with weight loss surgery can definitely benefit tremendously from this program. Obviously, there there are some different restrictions that they'll need to have. Uh, I'm a volume eater, so I'll show you like how to eat a lot, but you don't have to obviously hurt your stomach. You don't, I mean, I'm a big believer of like, like stop when you're satisfied. Like never, if you're not hungry, you don't have to force yourself to eat. Like you just, you'll learn from the program how to eat in a way that works best for you and your medical condition in every way. But like anyone with a specialty issue like this, I just really recommend, obviously you work in accordance to your doctor and obviously you're just sensible about the modifications you need to make. So like Jess, you know, was really intuitive and like even without me having to make like serious pregnancy modification she like figured out okay like I'm pregnant so I should probably make this modification she like had that sense but a lot of people you know I don't want people to think like this is weight loss surgery approved or a lot of people with type 2 diabetes are saying can I do this program and it's like it's not currently designed for someone with type 2 diabetes if your doctor gives you permission 
if your doctor's in close supervision, and if you're prioritizing blood sugar control before this, you should be fine and make the modifications as needed. Um, but you shouldn't follow this to an exact T if you have any sort of medical condition because you have to put your condition as priority. So, I mean, that's like, that. I mean, and there is so much flexibility within the program designed to like, you know, like when we first launched this with breastfeeding women, they were like, oh my God, but what do I do if I need to eat more? Like there's actually a video called want more? Sure. And <laughs> like how to eat more. Um, but it's like, you know, they hadn't watched the whole video before they reacted and started freaking out. So like this, the whole program is designed to be flexible, to make modifications, to make tweaks based on your best medical and personal condition. Everyone just has to have that sensibility to do it. And if you're working with a client who you don't think has that sensibility, um, and, and we don't have a, perfectly published modification for them, then I recommend just like wait till we have like the right modifications to make for that person. So you're not getting any sort of liability. Good. Unmute yourself if you have a question. I also wanted to ask you, what, what tips would you, you said obviously to go through the program ourselves, that firsthand experience is so powerful and allows us to, to better help people in our circle and, and kind of wider reach, but what are some tips that you would give a coach on, on sharing about the program, promoting the program, kind of as we're kind of going through it ourselves and haven't gone through it until it launches? What are some tips that you yeah. can give? Well, we've been working really hard on what we're calling a success group guide, which is excellent. So it's really like day by day, what to share with people going through the group. So even if you haven't gone through it yet, like I really recommend using that success group guide um, because it's, it's like how I would coach it. Um, and I would like, that's why I'm like everyone who I even went to high school with, who's asking me like to do the program, like find a coach because it really takes coaching to do this program. You're going to watch the information. You're going to see the, the PDFs and whatever, but it really takes the day-to-day -day coaching and those reminders and that group support and dynamic and accountability that really does change your mindset and makes this work so well. So um, as a coach and as other people in groups, I really hope everyone has access to that success group guide and has that tool. Um, there are also going to be additional videos and resources like to coaches only within the coach office. So uh, definitely use those as needed. Um, and, you know, just really keep encouraging to yourself and to everyone else to like trust the process. Like I said, the biggest differentiator with the 2B Mindset and any other program I know in existence is it gets easier with time. It gets more effortless with time and it becomes more effective with time. So month one is trial and error. Month one is not perfect. Month one is learning. Month one is 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 like people go nuts because people like the, you know, we, we're starting the test group on May 2nd. Like we're already we know because we've we've ran four test groups now we know the first two weeks it's like the bombardment of questions the bombardments of fear the bombardments of of reactivity of but what about this but what about you know what i mean but it really works itself out like with with time and practice it takes about like 10 15 days and then everyone like calms down and realizes it works and realizes there's a pra there's a system to it like jess is laughing because that's like how it works um so I, I mean, it's really, it's like about trusting the process, people staying with it, staying positive, um, realizing that answers do get, like questions do get answered as you watch all the videos, as you keep going through it. Um, and, and telling people to, to have that expectation that it gets, that you can lose more weight in month two, three, four, five, and six than you do month one. So in month one, people should lose at least six pounds, six, eight, 10, 20, whatever pounds. Like people lose a lot of weight in month one, but people really tend to lose more weight in month two, three, four, five, and even six than they do in month one because of that. So I think that's like so hard to message because so many people like aren't used to that. Most people are used to like following a super restrictive plan, losing a ton of weight month one, and then gaining it all back by the fifth week. This is complete opposite. So I think that's like one thing, like as coaches, you should already start getting used to and understanding. For me, the best before and after pictures are not the 30 day and 60 day. For me, the best before and after pictures are a year later, you know, like lot, like kept it off. And, you know, so I think like everyone kind of has to understand that shift. Oh, you're muted. 
I mean, I think as a society with these microwave dreams and really the crockpot journey, right? It's kind of... I never heard of that before. That's a great line. Shifting that. Cammie, <laughs> you, are you still there? You had a really great question. Will you unmute yourself? Where's Cammie? Where'd you go? Unmute your... Here, I'm going to unmute you. Okay, go okay. ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, my Let question was, I was, just, I was just talking hi. to a girl. Hi. And she doesn't need to lose weight. Hi. So would this program be for her? Hi. Yes. We've had so many hi. Hi. We've had so many coaches do the test groups who had no weight to lose, who outwardly had, you know, a great body, um, but internally were struggling tremendously with their relationship with food. Um, and they've been our best testimonials. So it was something that we weren't even expecting to market it as. And then there were so many coaches do the test groups just to learn about the program and see how they were going to coach others. And then they've become our best personal testimonials of saying, God, I was in such a bad place. And like everyone knew me as this healthy, fit person from the outside. But internally, every time I had a cheeseburger, I kept beating myself up about it or calling myself bad or feeling like I had to do five hours of workout the next day. And I no longer have that. And I'm so much freer because of it. Um, and like see so many mindset positive, just lifestyle being just coming out while I'm in the weight. So yeah. It's good. That's a good I have a question. question. Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, so this is, I guess, more specifically for us coaches and how we approach this long term, because it sounds like, I mean, we always pr preach about how it's not, you know, everything that we promote is not a fad, it's a lifestyle change. And it sounds like whatever you're about to be teaching us is going to be so revolutionary as a coach that I'm not going to want to try the nutrition plan for future programs. I mean, like lift is coming and then there'll be something after that and, and so on. Do you have any recommendations for us and how we approach kind of doing a hybrid in the, you know, of whatever fitness program we do and whatever the nutrition yeah. that you have set up for us? Yeah. Starting May 2nd, um, coaches only will have access to, um, Lara, who is the EVP of Beachbody and also Denis, who is, the nutritionist behind all those meal plans for all the workout programs, literally in an interview saying how you should do the to be mindset meal plan with all the workouts. So you would never, so basically there are some workout programs Beachbody has published that have specific nutrition plans that the trainer wanted you to do for like specific bulking purposes um, or like muscle gaining purposes. And like, if you want to follow that, you can, but what we've seen in the test groups is like follow the two B mindset meal plan while doing all those workout videos. And you can have like the most tremendous phenomenal results. Uh, and we've had people do this. I mean, T25, people are going back to hip hop vibes. People are going back to Pio. People are going back to three week yoga retreat. People are did 80 day obsession workouts with the two B mindset meal plan. Like they look freaking amazing. So starting May 2nd, um, that the head of nutrition, for Beachbody, um, we'll outline like how to do all the Beachbody workout programs with the 2B mindset and make whatever modifications you need. Like, you know, for T25, you might just want energize and maybe hydrate. But if you're doing ADA obsession, you might want to add the recover, like just basically showing you like, or if you would need another snack. So basically walking you through how to modify the 2B mindset meal plan with all those other workouts. But you would never like do this with the like 80 day obsession meal plan because they would never go together. They're complete opposites. Yeah. That's a really good question. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, and just kind of piggybacking off that, I think that if you've been a coach for a minute or you've done more than one program, you know that our bread and butter is kind of yo-yoing, right? Like we coaches know how to get results in 21 days or 60 days or 80 days. And then we work back up to another before photo because we just, it's not sustainable. And I think so many people go through cycles of like 21 days of awesome weight loss and then a month of like floating and then another 30 day program between programs and we're gaining back some of what we lost. And sure, it gives us nice dramatic short bursts of weight loss success, but I think that this program is going to completely change 
the yo-yo. Like we're not going to yo-yo up and down and up and down anymore. We're just going to keep going down and getting better results. And you won't be re-losing the same weight that you just lost. And yeah. I think that's going to be revolutionary. And you'll still get super excited with the Beachbody programs. Like that's the coolest thing is because I'm like excited that this is launching May 2nd. And then like lift four is not coming on for two months because once you get the food under control, once you give this two months, once you probably get down like 15 to 25 pounds, that's when you'll like want to, you know, take that up as a nice enhancement to this eating plan. Um, I also like that lift four is four days a week because I think that that's also gives people enough flexibility to weave it in to a sustainable plan. So I'm actually like, super excited that that's the next workout program coming out because I think that's going to be a nice addition. Um, you know, we've been running test groups through everything. We ran test groups through Sean week. We ran test groups through eight day session. Um, you know, like that we've, we've, you know, UV two was there at the beginning. Like there have been, everyone's been taking these on. Um, and I think everyone has totally different reactions to it. I really believe that there is a workout for everyone, but what we are all different and some people love the really intense things and some people love the non-intense things like three week yoga retreat and shift shop are both heart healthy they're both good for you but they are for different people and so i think one cool thing about this program is that people really start to look at working out as like a treat and not uh like something to dread they actually look forward to working out when they do the two mindset and a lot of coaches have said that that's really changed their personal mindset but also their coaching ability and their sales ability because now they actually like exercise more than they did before when they start to look at it in this way so i think you're all gonna be happy with how that gets integrated that's awesome and then with your just your background in and health and wellness then what are your thoughts about shakeology and some of our nutritionals and our sports yeah. Yeah, love, love, love. And you'll hear me talk a lot more about Shakeology. Um, Shakeology is a perfect accompaniment to this program. It's obviously amazing, really good for us. It also tastes so good. Um, but it works really well with the 2B mindset for a lot of extra reasons. Uh, one is I'm a big fan of feeling full and satisfied. I like, why are we eating if we're not going to be full and satisfied? So I show you like how to eat at each meal. So you are leaving each meal full and satisfied. Um, I'm a big fan of having protein at every meal because that's what keeps us full. Um, and Shakeology is so high in protein and also everything else. It's also high in fiber, which I'll explain is so also beneficial to just like good, stable energy. Um, so I'm a big fan of Shakeology. People who've done the groups like really weave it into different places. Some people like it at breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. I'll show you how you can incorporate it at any point in your day. I'm a big personal fan of having a consistent breakfast, which you guys will learn, and like finding some sort of morning consistency when like the rest of our lives are just so chaotic. It's nice to have like kind of like a foolproof plan in the morning to just set you up for success. Um, and that's why I like Shakeology as part of my consistent breakfast, which is also so easy to be consistent with because you just get a month's supply. It stays in your counter and like you don't need to always have fresh eggs or fresh berries or all these things to necessarily like make it work on, in a consistent fashion, which is so important. So um, you'll see like how I integrate it into any aspect of your day and any of your meals, but highly recommended as a daily part of the Chibi mindset and something we've seen as like tremendous in our results or just, and just positivity of people having a daily. So it's not required if someone's like allergic or something to an ingredient in Shakeology, they could still do this program, but I'm, I like highly, 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 highly push and encourage it. Great. Well, do you know if the videos will be streamable before the app? Yeah, so the app isn't coming out until June 4th, um, and the program is launched May 2nd. A lot of people are getting like ton, having tons of questions and distractions with the app. Let me make it clear, I have never seen this app. Like, I think people don't get that. Some people in the test groups are like, I haven't seen the app before it launches. Like, I haven't seen the app before it launches. <laughs> like, I lost 100 pounds without the app. Our test groups have lost thousands of pounds now without the app it's going to be like a nice added tool to those for all of us when it comes out on June 4th, but like completely unnecessary to do the program. Um, so the app will be out June 4th. It will hopefully be great on the go access to those videos, but so is if you have a tablet 
or a computer and you just access it through the to be mindset.com or through bod. So, I mean, I, I think people are getting a little too hung up on the people with like Android phones are saying, well, the app is only going to be available on iOS. I can't do the program. It's like, what? Like talk about like wanting to create your own excuses. Like it's totally unnecessary. So it's going to be a nice addition when it comes out on June 4th, but you do not need it to do the program. Another question I have someone who's gluten free. So what do you how do you deal with like gluten free? Totally do this program if you're vegan, vegetarian, gluten free, kosher, dairy free, anything. Pescatarian, allergic to nitrates, nitrates. I don't know what I mean, I'm getting messages of people being like, I only eat raw vegetables, not cooked vegetables. I have a stomach issue and I can't I can't eat peppers. It you can do this program no matter who you are. We made a specific vegan video, um, how to do it vegan, but you can, I mean, you could do this gluten-free, dairy-free, anything. Alana, I had a question. Since the app won't be out in the, my fitness pal is a real bad idea. Do you have any app recommendations for people who are morally opposed to writing down their food or using the notes in their phone that doesn't track calories, but still tracks food? Why not notes and phone? I love the notes in the phone. I'm with you. I yeah. am so with you. I yeah, can't. I had, yeah, I have clients who, inst if like they don't like to type and I'm, I'm, I don't like to handwrite and I'm the same way. Like I do like to handwrite, but I do like to type because you could do it in the bathroom. I don't know. Like you could do it wherever you are. Um, so I'm a big fan of the notes section of the cell phone um, and email, keeping it as a draft. Um, some people like to do an Excel spreadsheet. If you're like that type of type A personality, I wish I was, I'm not, but a lot of people are. Um, so yeah, you can find a digital way to do it. Uh, also, there's going to be, the PDFs are going to be available. So um, if you have some sort of like, maybe if you have some sort of like PDF writer um, app where you could write on top of PDFs, I think those exist. So you might be able to do that for the next four weeks before it launches. Um, but I recommend just, I really recommend the notes section of your phone for a few weeks before the app comes, if that's the case. That's what I'm thinking too. It's hard to find a food diary without calorie tracking. I really don't re recommend using any other sort of tracker other than ours because ours is really designed based on thousands of clients, so many years of experience. Like this tracker is not like anything else and it's really necessary for infusing the positive mindset without distractions. Anyone else? I mean, Alana, I've been corresponding with Colin and I know how many calls you've had and I appreciate so much your time because I know you've been busy <laughs> and we really appreciate you spending some time with but us. But I love it. I love seeing everyone before starting and I think it's, it's really exciting and I think it's really important that people just come in with an open heart and an open mind and trust the process and believe that this is the better way and that you don't have to suffer to be fit and thin and that this, you know, that there is no all or nothing mentality when it comes to your health and well-being. We only get one body. We get to have it forever and we have to feel good in it on a day-to-day -day basis. And there is a way to do that while still eating carbs and having alcohol, I promise you. So, you know, I just think it's important that people realize that and start believing it. And I get, I understand it's, it sounds too good to be true for some people, but there really is a better way. And I'm going to show it to you on May 2nd. I'm very excited. Yay. We are so excited. Thank, thank you, you so Dara, much. for getting everyone together for the call. Thank you, Jess, for being on. And thank you, everyone else, um, for being here. And I can't wait for you to get started. Thank you, Alana. Have a great right, day. Have the best day. Bye.